everybody, it's your girl, Rack Famous Star. I am here to give you the recap of episode two. Okay, so it left off with, um, they showed us a little bit last time, and before I thought it was, okay, it was Caitlin and a few other people in the storage room that weren't safe. Um, and I know Angela was there, and I think there was at least one or two other people. Um, but Caitlin was the main one that was talking pretty loud um, in the pantry about uh, Chris's decision. And I, I cannot call him Swaggy C. Uh, I feel like that name is stupid. That's not his government name. That's not what, you know, the judge calls him. That's not what the police are going to call him. That's not what, you know, the doctor is going to call him when they rip open his chest. They're not going to call him Swaggy C. They're going to call him Chris, you know. So, um... Yeah, so I'm gonna call him Chris. If you agree with me or don't, let me know in the comments. Um, that's not his government name. Um, but yeah, so Chris overhears them and at first he's like all mad, but at the same time you just made, I mean, I could see why she was talking like mad shit, but at the same time, like girl, you had to have known that some, there was gonna be eight people that weren't safe. So you can't be too mad and it's only week one. It's not like, you know, you've been there a month and you guys are besties and he still didn't save you like that's when I could see you'd be pissed but not week not week one um and so I think I don't know when this lemon squeeze happened um but and I feel like hold on, I feel like Chris is very uh impulsive with his diary room sessions like he might hear something. I feel like he'll go straight into the diary and be like, oh yeah, like Caitlyn, she's on my radar. And then like five minutes later, um, or maybe he just goes in the diary room a lot. Um, but he, after they kind of talked about it, she was like, yeah, I'm really feeling you. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think they kind of like lemon squeeze it out. Um, but I feel like this first week or these first few weeks, um, a lot of people build these shell alliances that have more than like three or four people so these shell lines will have like five or six people and that's just to get them through the first like few weeks and that's when you can really like i feel like that's when after the first few weeks people can really tell like what's going on i guess um and who they can really trust in their group and who's actually a competitor in their group and who they can feel like they can go a long way with um but this shell alliance uh was formed Oh, wait, no. Hold on. Let me go back. Um, oh, no, I'll talk about the Shell Alliance. The Shell Alliance called The Five. Um, it was put together by Chris because he knows after this week he won't be safe unless he wins HOH. You know, and there's definitely other people in the house that uh, could put, give him a run for his money. Um, but the Shell Alliance was with Fessel, uh, Caitlin, Chris, Angie, and Haley. Now, I thought this was a weird group, mainly because Angie and Caitlin, I didn't think, I knew Fessel, not Fessel, I think, I knew Chris would probably go with the group uh, just because his personality, but, and be the leader of that group, he's definitely the leader of that group, but I thought Angie would not be, I don't know, I mean, good for her that she's in one, and uh, Caitlin, I thought Caitlin would be like, um, but I don't know. Um, so, yeah, he feels like that because they're all solid. I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, those people look so shaky, especially Haley. Um, but also, before that, let me, let me go back to what I was talking about before. Um, oh my gosh, I say um so much. Okay, let me, let me not do that. And I say it so loud. So, I replaced it with so. I Chris, Bailey, Angie, Haley, Fessel, and Fessel, they get this meditation, like, session by Caitlin, and it looked like they were all pretty feeling it. I mean, like, when you have nothing else to do in the house, if someone's like, hey, you want to try this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, like, why not? And so, yeah, they seem like they were all feeling it. Like, I mean, I would do it, and I'm not really into yoga. I've done a few yoga classes before, and I was so bored. So, um, so, I mean, they were probably, like, just finding something to do. So, the 
HOH competition was next, and it was announced that only the eight unsafe will compete, which makes sense. If you're safe, why would you, why would you compete? You know, uh, why would you win? You know, you're already HOH is the point to be safe. Um, and so the competition was called Microchip Mayhem. And basically what they had to do was go on these, everyone started on this middle like block and they had to go across this like, like tightrope. It wasn't a tightrope, but it was like, it was small, narrow path, I guess. And they had to get a ball. I, I think they were called like deletion chips or something. And they had to go back on that same path and put it in someone else's container. And once they got 10, then they were deleted from the game. Now this one, I felt kind of bad for these, for some of the people because if you, I mean the whole point of the game is to make connections, but like I felt, I felt bad for some people because they targeted the people that, I don't know, I don't feel like this was a fair competition for week one. I mean maybe cool, you know, you kind of see who's out for you and who's not, but at the same time like. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't feel like it was fair, uh, but that the whole point of the game is not to be fair. So whatever. Um. So Winston and Angela teamed up to get Sam out, and she was an easy target because the whole Sam thing. And I still feel so bad for her. Like, I don't think it's fair. I I don't think the punishments were fair. I feel like one Sam's was definitely way worse than Casey's. Like. At least Casey still gets to be up and around the house. She's just in a different outfit. Like, so what? You don't get to wear your own clothes. So what? You have to stay in a room. So what? I don't feel like hers was that big of a deal. But Sam's like, you're not even there. I I mean, I, I think I'm going to look on the feeds and see like what it's really like of her in that because I, I'm sure it's perceived differently on the show. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe I just, I just feel bad when people are in those situations. So... I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So next, Bailey and Tyler, I guess they kind of looked locked eyes and teamed up to get Steve out. And I once again, I feel bad for Steve because he's an old guy. Not old. He's the oldest guy there. And so and he was already having a hard time like that man was not going to win. So I guess put him out of his misery or whatever. And then next thing you know, it was Caitlyn, then Winston, then Angela. JC was actually doing pretty good. JC probably could have won it, but he didn't want to win this competition the first week because he was like, that's a lot of, like, you don't need that the first week. So, I mean, it's either, like, depending on who you are, you either need it or you don't. You know, like, I feel like Steve needed it. Kate, or not Caitlyn, Sam needed it. But everyone else didn't really need it, so... I mean, cool. I mean, some people did, but Steve. I feel like Steve and Sam definitely needed it. So after Caitlyn was Winston, then Angela, JC, and then it came down between Bailey and Tyler. And uh, towards the end, Tyler, when JC was still in, Tyler started putting some in Bailey's instead of really putting it in JC's, even though Bailey was still putting them in JC's because he was like, eventually, he's like, we have the same right now. Eventually, it's going to be just us. So why not put a few more in hers? And then, you know, and and then, you know, it'll give him a better chance of winning. And so Tyler became the first HOH. Does it feel like to anyone that he has, like, cat clock eyes? Like, his eyes, he gets them so big and they're like, uh, 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 uh. I don't know. Caitlin is already saying that Angela needs to go. No, I get it. You're one of the seven that are unsafe. So you have to t say a name. So it's not yours. And I feel like a lot of the times people will go with, if somebody says a name and then somebody else says that name, you know, as long as it's not yours, cool. You know, like you just have to say a name and get out there. So that's what Caitlin was doing. I don't know if Angela, I feel like Angela could be a good person to be with. You know, I feel like Sam and JC need to work with Angela and Winston. I don't feel like Winston... Okay, this other alliance, I feel like is stupid. I feel like it is just like grasping at people that, just grasping. This next alliance doesn't have a name yet, but it's Winston, Brett, Angela, Rachel, 
Casey and Tyler. Now they swooped up Tyler because Tyler is HOH. If it would have been Sam, they would have swooped up Sam. You know, if it, if it would have been Steve, they would have swooped up Steve. So this alliance is just to protect them all from this first week's um, eviction. Now, if they would have swooped up Sam, I'm sure Sam would have been safe. I like, like I said, I still feel so bad for her. Let me know what you guys think of these shell alliances because I feel like they're stupid. So Sam, obviously, like this, this, I already felt like she was feeling sad and I just cannot believe like she's feeling sad because she feels excluded, you know, like she can't go up the stairs. She, I, maybe she can, but she, it takes her a while. People probably don't want to deal with all that. You can't really get to know somebody when you're staring at a screen. Like it's just her voice, but I don't know. I just, I felt bad. She starts like, she talks to Tyler and she like breaks down and Tyler's like, I almost cried, you know? And I was like, shoot, I was watching it and I almost cried. Like I almost teared up. And he doesn't know if he could put her up. Like, I know I don't think I would because I'm like, you already have it hard enough, week one, of not really being in the house. And probably week two, if you put her up week one, she's gonna come back in the house. If she, if she escapes eviction, she's gonna come back in the house week two and people are going to put her up again because they feel like, oh, well, we don't really know you, blah, 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 blah. Of course you don't. They put me up week one. So whatever. And she is an obvious choice because of her punishment and because you you haven't really got to know her. And Steve is also an obvious choice. Bailey says to Tyler that her and Swaggy C are super close and like family. And Tyler, he says he almost thinks like, oh, yeah like he says he was like bailey you let me know like you're working with swaggy like you're one of his minions blah blah blah. and i don't i don't really think tyler is the one to do anything about it he says like oh i might make a bold move this week but it's week one you're not gonna make a bold move like not gonna lie sam and steve are obvious easy safe choices like i really hope sam comes back and wins HOH or something next week or gives herself off the block or I don't know I really like her and so the noms ended up of course being Sam and Steve he said there's no rhyme or reason but they were the first ones out or the first ones that fell no um they, they weren't they were the first ones targeted and so of course and Steve said he's going to make deals. That's his strategy to make deals because he probably realizes he's not so good at competitions. And Sam says she will pick herself up and keep fighting. And Swaggy, Chris, said he's he's going to win Vito and take one of the weak targets down and place his real target on the block. Even though I don't think he realizes he can't place them on the block but try to get one of the bigger targets. Even though Tyler's already said he'll probably put up Bailey in her play, in one of their places, I like it makes me really want to look and see who who was a replacement nom because they they might have played Vito already or at least picked players for it. But yeah, um I don't know if you guys really looked into the cbs.com um the app store or is it even open? Like do you guys know if it's open? Let me know in the comments below if it's open because I kind of want to check it out at least for a few weeks and while I'm free or until school starts back up. But yeah, so I hope you in got uh, in guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this second episode. It's I'm going to try to keep this up. I really like doing these, even though there's I don't have a huge audience yet. But yes, so this was episode two. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like more of these videos, you want me to talk about something specific in my next video, let me know. Um, but until then, have a good one. Bye.